G'day folks, this is part four in a series of me making a part in a single setup in my CNC without using my manual lathe as I did previously. This part is a crankcase protector for use on the Yamaha R3 motorcycle used in the Junior Race Series. A quick look at the drawing and we'll get on to how I made them last time. Last time I made these I made 30 and I really didn't like having to use the manual lathe so with an order for 50 I thought I really need to sort out some way of being able to do this completely in the CNC lathe. It really boils down to finding some way to hold the blank in the first place. Last time I used these chuck jaws when the part was faced off but they don't work very well when the part isn't faced off because there's just not enough length of jaw hanging on to the OD of the material. This is my TOS 3 jaw. It has a max of 39 and this part is 46 so not going to work. I found these from a previous job but these were bored to 50 and I really wanted them to be 46. So I took two of them and stuck them on a four jaw chuck and bored them out to 46 and it worked really well. I had planned to make these parts using a 12mm slot drill to do the drilling and the boring. I've done it before and it's worked quite well, but not this time. It was terrible. Look, knurling with a slot drill. That's terrible, isn't it? And if anybody's wondering how on earth I got that lighting effect, it's because the part is sitting on top of a torch. This boring bar gives a 14 minimum diameter with a 12 mil shank and that's about the best you can do. I'll be drilling 12.7 for the starting hole for the bore so this should work okay. So here are the tools at 6 o'clock we've got the 12.7 drill, at 3 o'clock we've got a 55 degree turning tool, at 12 o'clock we've got the boring bar and at 9 o'clock we have the parting tool. This drill is perfectly on centre vertically and horizontally. I can only assume that the noise it makes is because I sharpened it. Now from time to time you will hear puffs of the air gun trying to blow the swarf away from the cutting tool. I set up my Noga spray mister to run dry with maximum airflow and it worked quite well to keep the swarf away. Here's the simulation of the drilling. I know it's a bit boring but it's just drilling a hole but it would seem silly to leave it out. Now we move on to the turning. If you're wondering why the turning is coming next and not the boring, as you would expect, it's because I needed the tools opposite each other, the drill and the boring bar, to balance the turret. And it would have been really messy to go do the boring and then the turning and the parting. This way is the, what would you say, most elegant way to uh, set the tools up and have them rotate one after the other in the turret. Here you can see the air blast is bouncing off the chuck and getting rid of the swarf quite nicely. You'll notice here that after the roughing cut the tool actually appears to go away as go home and come back again. But in fact it didn't do that on the machine. All I'd done was change the G50 to give me an X offset because I couldn't be bothered writing a whole new tool path for a, just a small cut. It is the boring bar. It's taking very small cuts but at quite a high feed. And it's almost chipping look. The reason that um, toolbar is coming so far away from the work is to give more time for it to let the swarf drop away. When I That's a 10 mil. Uh, distance. When I had it at 6 it wasn't allowing the swarf to drop away as readily as it does when it's set at 10. Here you can see the swarf is quite thick that's because it was first cut into the 12.7 hole and had to take a fair bit away to make room for the boring bar. Here's the finish with the boring bar and proof that my maglite has a very blue LED. Here's a simulation of the boring bar. Don't know whether you noticed, but when we were looking at the part being machined, the feed was almost the same speed as the rapid, so 
I don't think I could have gone much faster with the feed as I don't think my Z had any more speed left in it. Final cut with the boring bar and then onto the parting tool. Sorry about the long delay here but if I try editing it out now um, I could lose anything or everything. I use Movie Maker which I find very easy to use but it doesn't always allow you to do the most progressive sort of things. So here's the parting tool just going in very slowly creates a radius and then it parts off or in my case it doesn't part off. Can you see the air blast working on that swarf? It's really quite good. So onto the simulation for the parting off. Now if you have a look at this you will see that after the final uh, radius, this one, the tool actually comes back out before going back in again. This is because I was having all sorts of problems and tried various strategies to try and uh, remove the problem but none of them worked. This was the problem I was having. I was getting this white line around the part and when I attacked that white line with my fingernail I managed to separate it from the part. After trying everything I could possibly think of I actually took the tool out of the turret and when I put a straight edge on it, it was bent. So um, I attacked it with the pliers and stuck it in a vise and bent things around a bit and uh, managed to get it working properly. Right, my videos get about 1200 views in the first few months of their existence. This video is three times longer than a normal video so I expect you all to watch it at least three times. Leave lots of comments and uh, I'll get back to you and we'll see how it goes. Thank you for watching.